Yo, it's AK here. I thought I'd do a recording of, or a post-match recording of myself versus Wazo Blur. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. Um, it's for Never Use Snake Draft. Um, but this is week five for playing in RBY NU. There's uh, best of three, and I thought I'd just give a bit of insight and analysis into the games. Um, what my thought process was going through, um, just you know, thought on the teams and gameplay and stuff. For those who are interested in just like I don't know, learning, and it also it's a bit for myself to kind of get used to analyzing games more in this tier, as I haven't played it a huge amount. Um, in fact, I started about a month and a half ago. So let's go into it. So. This lead matchup, I'll just turn my um, turn it so that I'm facing this side. Polywell versus Charizard. Typically, this cycle is pretty well known. You attack once with Charizard, um, and then Polywell tries to click Hypnosis. Obviously, Slash can do about. I think I got a low roll Slash there. I think it's 34 to 40.5 percent. If you get the max roll with. Um, with Charizard Slash, then you um, put um, Poliwhirl in range of two Seismic Tosses from Blastoise. Generally, then you go into Blastoise or whatever your bulky water is, or you can, alternatively you can go into something like a Fero here, or or even like Clefable if you don't if you don't want to go into uh, Blastoise. Generally, you go into Blastoise though, you click. Seismic Toss or Body Slam here, so I click Seismic Toss three times um, but he switches into Polygon, he wants to preserve his Poliwhirl which is fair enough um, there's a chance that I have a Sleeper in the, in the back so he's probably thinking okay well I can use Poliwhirl potentially to uh, as a mind game for Sleep Sack I size with toss uh, Polygon and then I'm going to switch out into Clefable as he clicks T Wave. Um, here I'm going to threaten T Wave um, back onto whatever he what if he wants. I think he's going to switch out Polygon. I don't mind him going into Nidal King or Golem here like a ground type because um, Clef can win this war even when paralyzed. Um, because Blizzard, Blizzard 2 hit is no king, whereas Earthquake is a still a chance to free it kill. Um, here, though, I get full powered into um, crit, so I obviously don't get um, that um, possibility. Um, then I'm going to go into Mime here. He switched out uh, no king into Mime. I could have T-waved here, but I think it's better to just Psychic and then go T-wave. Um, um, so yeah, we trade T-waves. My back, um, the reason I want to trade T-wave with my, my back two are, um, I think are Kabutops and Poliwhirl. So um, slowing down Mime and getting Chip on Mime is going to be really important. So like after one seismic toss, um, he'll be in range of like, um, basically I'm just gonna trade with my my mime with his mime. Uh, he do actually gets full power there, um, but really at this point he's starting to be in range of um, Kabutops. I don't think he can, he can't revenge kill Kabutops um, as well, which is really important. Um, usually one of the things that makes Kabutops bad, well not bad, but like weakens Kabutops is the fact that it can be easily revenge killed um, when you're getting your SD off, say, um, mainly by Nidal King and by Mime. At this point, I'm happy to take um, a Seismic Toss because I'll still be out of range of Nidal King Earthquake. Here he goes into Nidal King. I'm just going to... Earthquake has like a 75% chance to 2 it kill, I think. Somewhere around then. But I'm just going to click Psychic so that the looking is in range of my Blastoise, of my Poliwhirl, and of my um, 
and of my uh, Kabutops. Um, unfortunately, I get a crit here. I guess that's kind of payback for him hacking my Clefable. Um, because normally I, I wouldn't need to crit, I just need to click Psychic once. And here he reveals Rapidash. I know his back is going to be Charizard. Generally, you'd, you'd only run, you know, I, I can't see it being anything else but Charizard here. Have I like a pseudo fire spam team? And it's like at this point, I know I'm going to win the game. I switch into Charizard here. The reason I switch into Charizard, I know he's going to spin or blast. Yeah, it doesn't make sense for him to double into Charizard yet. Um, but, I mean, even if he did that, I still have way too much defensive utility in order to um, um, to deal with Charizard at this point. He can't break through. Um, so, my goal, essentially, I, I switch in here just so I can double into Blastoise on Charizard. Um, because um, he's not going to keep fire spinning and I don't think he's going to keep fire spinning and letting me potentially wake. So I, I go into Blastoise here on Charizard and then I'm going to switch between um, Blastoise and Poliwhirl. The reason I don't want to reveal um, Kabutops here is if he gets me into range of Hyper Beam on Blastoise, say if he SDs or something. Um, then I'm gonna just um, go into Kabutops at that crucial point in the game. So I kind of want to keep it out um, out there, uh, like hidden, I guess. So essentially here, Oazo Blur is um, just trying to chip my Blastoise into range. It's a 62% is the... Um, is the roll for um, plus um, two hyper beam the max roll? So I just keep it. I keep, I switch into polywall here, and I'm just gonna keep polywall in here just so I'm out of range uh, of of this hyper beam roll. Um, and yeah, and plus the fact that polywall is in means he can't go into potentially Porygon. Um, here I land the Hypnosis and I'm going to click Amnesia, which is just going to win the game for me. Um, here because he's not realistically going to be able to fire spin me down um, with Nine Tails. He'd try for Body Slam Power, I think, but he decides to go for Toxic and try and spin, spin me with um, Charizard. I think here... 83% am I still out of range of um, plus 2 beam I think I'm in range of plus 2 beam he might I think what he's worried about is um, oh yeah I'm definitely in range oh no it's still a roll but it's a roll that I think he has to take um, here 80, 83%, oh, maybe that's a bit, it's a roll out of his favour. Uh, I guess, I guess going for fire spin is kind of a play here. Because um, I'll definitely put me in range, but I'm, I'm just going to stay in no matter what. Just make sure he, um... doesn't get the hit off on Blastoise because Blastoise is still out of range as well. It's like Blastoise is fully out of range. Um, and yeah, eventually I'd, if I needed to, I could just sack, sack Mr. Mime um, as well. And then go into, go into Blastoise and force him to, force him to, um, force him to try and beam crit or um a fire spin which will give me another chance to hack him and then i can reveal kabutops as well i think it's unlikely to win from this position and yeah here he used fire spins like a 30.2 percent chance to miss so it misses of course fire spin does do that 
Um, that's why I, like I don't use that move. Um, like this game, I didn't really use that move. So um, it just it just means like everything is like more accurate. The only thing that I used that was not a hundred percent accurate here was um, hypnosis, and hypnosis has such an upside um, that it's actually worth using despite it being inaccurate. Um, fire spin is not that good, unfortunately. So yeah, like we see like here, like he misses two fire spins, which is which is definitely unfortunate, but it's like a ten percent chance that he's gonna miss both fire spins. Um, yeah, and these these moves these moves are like I. I dislike the the amount of inconsistency in some of these um, in some of these teams. Even though I think his his team's fine, I don't like Rapidash um, in in the back position. I think it's a lot, but I think his team would have been potentially better if he had Rapidash lead and then mid world could have seen some more usage. I don't, I'm not sure what I think. Regardless, it's an interesting team. Um, anyways, um, Polywell is just going to sweep here and I end up 5 0 -ing. Um But yeah, this game was kind of in the bag. Um, mainly, um, uh, my team comp just out um, outdid his as well, uh, which allowed the game to be really easy. Um, uh, once I um, got the chip off on Polywell and got the hypnosis off on Polygon it's gonna it's gonna be pretty chill. Um even if he hadn't have slapped Polygon I had S D S D Kabutops um to break to break. Um so gone to game two I'll switch sides again and it was Charizard versus Mime I click T wave here turn one. I think he could have gone Golem here because I think this trade is one that I'm happy to take. Um, I think like Mime versus the sleep leads, it, I think it's questionable. Um, Mime's quit rate is the probability is pretty low. They're gonna kill. I guess like the risk of Mime going to sleep is pretty high. I've had this discussion with um, Serpy and a few other people about. Um, uh, mime mime lead. I don't mind it. I think it's good in this particular in this particular matchup. It's good um, because mime is very difficult to switch into. Whereas Charles is a lot easier to switch into the mime, but it is better versus um, a variety. It's good versus a variety of leads, basically. Um, anyways, the slash is good. Is fine for him. Um, he gets a good roll on slash. It's puts potentially in range of like a fire blast um from Moltres or I'm trying to think of another role, um Hyrule um Earthquake from Nero King or something like that. So it does have its uses. Uh, the chip is good. Or puts in range of two seismic tosses from my opposing mime. Here I just go into Golem. Not sure if you clicked Earthquake or Slash there. I could see Earthquake being a play. Either ways, I know he's paralyzed, so there's a chance he'll get full parried. Um, and here, I just click Earthquake because I know he's not going to stay in. If he just like lost his Charizard for free, that would be um, devastating. And Earthquake does slightly more damage um, to like Clefable. Here, I'm not. I'm not sure, in retrospect, maybe this is a mistake and I could have just gone straight into my own Club Fable. Um, but I I figured that there was a chance that he might just go for a slam or go for a T-Wave. Um, as um, And then I get another Quake. And then I'd be able to 1v1 this Club Fable and have a full health Club Fable. I figured that, like, Gollum, now that I know that he doesn't have... I'd have, like, a... 20% Golem, which would still be um, able to switch into other fi fire types once. And Charizard already paralyzed. 
Um, I thought I'd be in a good position. I didn't need Gollum that much since Paralyzed Zard is is not very good. Um, so yeah, I Earthquake here, and um, if these have been slightly high raw, I'd have been able to body slam. See, uh, but he was like a body slam was a roll, so I went for hyper beam. Actually, this is the first time I use hyper beam Clefable in this tournament. Generally, I think um, the slam Blizzard Thunderbolt and T Wave is the best clef, but this one is um, just Blizzard um, s a Blizzard Slam um, Hyper Beam and T Wave. Um, I I miss Hyper Beam here. I don't think he has counter on his um, Zard, um, but he could he could he could have done because. Okay, the thing, it, the thing is, um, it's just like just as likely that I click um, slam there, and then he can, and then he will um, like get t bolted because I won't just won't lay encounter. Um, but I, uh, I, I respect it. If he had uh, counter, that would have been unfortunate turn I end up um, losing this Clefable anyway straight away I decided to sack Clefable I'm not sure I could have gone a golem here um, but I wasn't a hundred percent on um, going golem so I just let Clefable go to sleep in retrospect I should have just I should have just gone golem um, even if golem dies I can then go mime and prevent him from getting sleep and he's like in a pretty bad position because I can trick then I can trade um I just then I just seismic toss his or T bolt his actually I T bolt his mime um I think um if he goes into mime and that 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 way even if he um T waves my mime then I'm blocking Venom off at the same time um whereas I can just threaten him out with by winning the speed tie. I guess I guess or even if he does like predict my golem and click psychic. It's difficult to say. Um and then but yeah, I could have gone like Golem soaked to sleep and gone into Clef. But I had decided to do it this way. I think this way is probably worse. But that's kind of a retrospect thing. Here, um, yeah, he gets me on on the mime turn. Like I'm just I'm just here to one take some sleep turns off. So maybe I can wake wake this later on in the match. Maybe versus um, potentially versus maybe his club evil, or if he has like a passive mon like Blastoise, I can wake left up um, and get one hit off. He gets a grip though, and he correctly predicts me going into mime so here i i click psychic but i get paralyzed i decide to at this point i know i'm out of range of one slash so i decide to just um t-bolt him um just to get some chip on this and as i doubt that i'm gonna get in golem again this game and then I go Charizard um, just in case he decided to click Earthquake there instead of Slash and then here I'm pretty sure uh, for my prep I'm pretty sure this team since he has these these three I saw a Golem team either ways I think Earthquake is the best play he can't stay in with Charizard because if I just if I SD as he clicks Slash and I SD again then he's in real big trouble even if he has even if he has Gollum because I can I could then like potentially like fire 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 spin um, fire spin spam until uh, until Gollum is in range um, is it he rock slides unfortunately I get crit on Porygon as I go into that and it's just just dies um that's the problem with this mon it 
is just not very good versus crits because it's just so slow. Um, otherwise, I'd be able to live that and threaten a threaten a blizzard or a a, a psychic. I can't remember if I was blizzbot or blizzard psychic. Uh, I could have I would have probably recovered and then gone mime on on Venomoth. Maybe I wouldn't have gone mime on Venomoth in case he doubled into um, Gollum. It depends how I felt on it in the game. But anyways, I just go Blastoise here and Surf once as he goes into Venomoth. This just puts him in hyper beam range of my or of my Blastoise. Um, so I'm thinking here, our Psychic. I know that he's lost. Um, I know that he's gonna go in Zard and probably KO me. This time though, he loses special, so I I stay in to click psychic again because I know he's going to be slower, and it's unfortunately I get full powered. At this at this point, I think I'm going to lose this game. Uh, my only way to win really is SD Charizard. I think he has he hasn't revealed his water, um, and he hasn't revealed mime. Mime is not as big of an issue although I can't boost on it um, it's just looking very unlikely that I'm ever going to get an ST with Zard unless it's on this his own Zard and at this point unfortunately I can't I can't um, at this point unfortunately I can't sweep his team because his water will block Charizard um, so here I just hyper beam hyper beam just covers I know he's not going to go Golem, he just covers um, Venom off if he decides to um, take a Surf and then just um, and then just get in Venom off there for whatever reason. I don't think he's going to switch into his Water, I uh, don't think he's going to switch into Mime. So um, here I just go Golem on the Stun Spore kind of have to hope that he's not Mega Drain, of course he is, I don't know at this point um, what his last two are, he could be, technically could be um, Blastoise Mime, uh, Mega Drain does make more sense, but there's a chance he's uh, double edge, I don't think this team's particularly opposing Mime weak, um, but double edge can help versus some matchups, particularly Mime. Um, Charizard here, I go for Fire Blast, Kisias, Kabutops, or Kingler. Um, I think I think it's just generally better versus them um, than going for going for Light Earthquake. I knew I was going to switch out. He can't risk he can't risk me um, having Fire Blast, and Kingler is a solid check at this point. Then crab hammer into Blastoise and yeah at this point I, I know I've lost the game um, but I'm just kind of like feeling out the end game plays because I know he's got mime uh, he gets a there's a chance that I don't get to it carried by this is why I stay in I've ways I can't switch into anything else anyways because if I switch into Charizard, I'd get too low on be able to SD. Um, I was just hoping that I could hack some of like maybe a surf, a surf, a surf crit uh, would be able to bring the game back into my favor, and I could maybe SD Zard on probably on I'd probably on a Venomoth dodge, and then you know win fifty fifties. It was looking unlikely anyways. Sorry, I had a slight pause in the recording because um, my throat was dying so I got a whiskey, honey and lemon. It smells brilliant. Just to tie my throat over whilst I analyse this last game. So, game three on Venomoth versus Polywell matchup. 
typically Venomoth's favoured here. Um, it's, I don't know, there's kind of a debate of which side of the matchup is better, because uh, Poliwar's upside is higher, but Venomoth is more consistent. I think it's like, there's like about a 62-63% chance that Venomoth um, sleeps in the first two turns, and like a 30 eight 37-38% chance for Poliwhirl but then there's also a 1% chance that neither sleeps in the first two turns funnily enough this particular time I win the interaction and then here I just start spamming Psychic um, I'm not going to predict um, like him switching into Mime or something I'm happy to just get Chip on Mime um, Obviously the paralysis is better, but I can paralyze mine with my own mime or with um with Club Fable, so I'm not too worried about it. I just click psychic uh as he just like stay basically stays in um I believe it's just like it's just the mind game of him not wanting something paralyzed. Um here and he gets I get the special job obviously at that point. I believe like if I get a a crit um um then he's like starting to get into the point where I'll be able to sleep another Pokemon. It needs to keep Poliwhirl as a sack. So um yeah, so I just keep clicking so I click stun board this turn because I think he's gonna switch out. And I limed it on Blastoise. I'm just gonna um, keep psychic spamming this three times. Well, I'm gonna psychic hit three times um, until I'm like 10% HP. Um, reason for that is I have Cedra in the back, and any chip on this is really good. I want to force it to potentially rest early, or just like force force it low and then force it out. Even at 10%, Venomoth is useful for one thing, which is um, being able to get one Psychic off on Little King. Um, it also speed ties Mime. Um, and to a lesser degree, it's not as important Moltres. So I can just um, potentially stun Spoilers Pokemon. Um, I'll let him... Um, um, just keep attacking me as I keep clicking Psychic. Unfortunately, I um I miss one, which will put him even lower, and I could have gone into class this turn where he'd have been like about um forty percent, which would have been a lot better. But it's one of those things you just you live with it. And here I go for Teapot just in case he um tries to like click rest or something. Here, yeah. um, I don't want him to rest um, on a body slam, and yeah, here we're going to trade T waves, and we're just going to go through the Clef versus Clef. He gets a good crit uh, for him, and so we're basically even now. He gets, and we have some like paralysis, and. I'm going to T bot here. T bot crit still KOs. I don't think he's going to go into Little King because I still get a Blizzard here. And I could have just clicked Body Slam um, as well. Body Slam crit um, would KO, but T bot crit also KOs. So I think T bot there is better. And he crits me again with Body Slam. And quite unfortunate because I, otherwise I had 22 to 26%, I believe. So. If I just go back, what was I on, like 55, um, I'd be potentially um, out of range of like Surf and, surf and Blastoise and stuff like that. So yeah, it's unfortunate, but crit happens, he got a max roll crit, and he's going to go to Mime and, and, and uh, clean me up. And now I'll just go into my own Mime and T-Wave. I know he's gonna likely T wave. The fact that he T waves here tells me he's got Nidoking. King. I still have Venomoth here as a as a good good backup, and I just need 
and Charizard. I just need Chip on Nidoking, really. Um, here, and and I've got Mime as well at um, out of range. The range is like 54 max roll. So I'm out of range of Nidoking. But he's, he actually switches Mime out here. Um, probably fear, maybe fearing the same thing that I did. Um, there he goes, Poliwhirl, to presumably sack it. Um, even if he waits, he can wait here on a full para. Um, but yeah, I, so there is chance of him waking and just messing me up, which he actually that manages to do. I I have to click T bot here. Um, like I know he's gonna click Amnesia. Um, and then I'll go and sack Venomoth, which is kind of unfortunate. But Venomoth's usefulness is gone. Whereas Mime, I think Mime can still potentially be useful. It, it's sixty-five percent powered. Mime is going to be more useful than um, Venomoth at this stage because he's just got he's got his old Mime. Which is going to neutralize it, and he's not going to let me get asleep. I click Quake, um, and then he goes into Nick King. I'm going to click Quake again. Fortunately, I get a crit here, but it doesn't matter. I just want to get him in in range of Cedra. Um, Nidor King is um, Hydro Pump does, I think, between like 80 something and 97.5% um, to Nidor King from Cedra, so um, you do actually need a, a tiny bit of chip. Um, so, yeah, I know he's going to rock slide, um, but I, I, I let him do that, anyways. And then I fire blast here. It's my best move to hit um, Charizard. And Charizard, which I know is likely in the back, and then um, it also kind of hits Blastoise as well. He he can't even if he goes Blastoise, he can't rest with Blastoise because if I I'll click SD, and then then I can click SD again and potentially win the speed tie with with Zard, and then I just win the game. So. Um, so him, him going Blastoise would have um, not changed anything, I think. So he goes Charizard, which is best Charizard check. Now he spins. Um, I'm just going to go between Charizard and Blastoise, even 19%. If he misses a spin, um, I can get some valuable chip off on this Zard. Um, and even if he SD is like once I've um, once I've slashed once, I'll be able to. I have full health Blastoise and full health Cedra, so I'll be able to um, clean him up. That just puts him make sure he's in range of Hydro Pump as well. The blast. Here I go Charizard, as as. He goes Blastoise. I know it's coming. Um, he's going to double into Blastoise sometime or another. Um, uh, because I keep going back between Blastoise and Charizard. I click Hyper Beam here. Um, just because I think he's going to surf and KO me. Um, and that'll just give me put him in, so he can't actually switch into Hydro Pump from Cedra. And here he clicks Surf. Um, if you get four powered, I can. I think I just click SD. Um, here we're just gonna trade mimes. Um, he puts me in Little King range. In I think in Blastoise range. Basically, uh, mime is in range of everything now, and then I win the speed tie. It wouldn't have mattered anyways. And then here I go into Cedra. I'm saving mine for like the fire spin in the game, if it gets to that. 
and mime is also useful if he rests um, with his blast. He might actually rest with his blast, so I can just go into mime and well, I have the mind game that I can go into mime and just start t boating because he needs to sack Nido King here because he can't he can't switch into if he switches into Zard he loses the game because um, I just keep um, I just keep um, well I go I actually go for the um, I actually go for the um, Hydro Pump crit as he tries as as he tries to surf me and then even if he um and then I can just go mime or I can go into my own Blastoise and click surf. Um so he can't just sack Charizard. Um because then then he definitely lose. Um he can't go into Blastoise because Pomp 2 it goes. So he has to sack Nido King here. As I agility, I click Blizzard here. It doesn't matter. Blizzard into Hydro Pump KOs. Um, it, it's just more accurate. Um, and then yeah, he goes into Blastoise. I go obviously go for the Pump Crit. I don't get it. Um, he rests, and I'm just gonna pump twice. I want to wait for him to wake up, and now I'm going Toxic. I want to force him to, um, I want to force, if he rested there, I could, I could go into Blastoise more safely. Um, so I just wanted to force him to rest. He clicks Toxic here. I think you have to click Toxic. Um, I did think about this particular situation. I wasn't sure whether it would be right for him to rest rather than Toxic, but I have Seismic Toss, Seismic. Um... It's hard to say. I think I think here Toxic is the right play. Um, it's a difficult end game, so he's just trying to force my Blastoise to rest. Um, here I win the the speed tie and goes into Charizard, and I'm gonna click Surf the first time. I think he should actually have clicked SD here. Um, he actually ends up clicking um, Fire Spin, which um, misses. He has gone for four Fire Spins. And I don't think any, none of them have, none of them have missed, um, which is improbable. So yeah, this time he goes for fire spin as I just crit him with Blastoise. Um, even if not at that that point, I think like let's say he hit fire spin, I think I just go and mime, even if he um, misses. Even if he misses fire spin on mime, I just click um, T wave, which forces him to kill me. Because T wave into T wave into um, um, just well anything uh, will put him in blastoise surf range. Um, if not, um, it's likely that he gets full powered because uh, he still would need to SD. He need to SD. Um, as I um, as I got full powered, he'd need to SD twice actually. I think this, uh, and then I'd obviously get a regular poison as I switch back in. Anyways, it was a fun um, series, very close. I thought I'd um, give it a proper analysis just so you know people who are interested in the tier can have a well my personal perspective on things um i liked most of his teams um the first one i was i'm not a huge fan of like mid rapid dash and double fire i think i think mid rapid is it's okay it's okay um but i think it's hard to make work these um like double triple fire teams um just in, inconsistent when um, Rapidash has to rely on hitting Toxic and hitting Fire Spin when you just switch between your like your water or your water and Charizard or your water and Golem um, yeah so other than that like I like this team I think it's pretty good 
it's just like generally generally solid this this is the sort of thing that i'd i'd definitely use this this sort of team uh, structure like exordia which is just these five bonds plus polywell i think it's good golems also good so yeah um that's about it really i i had a look at some of the other games um these ones were pretty dominant these ones were close i think kate is played better and deserved to win um and then we have the last game which is Enigami versus may coming up soon so hopefully um i'll get to watch that li get to watch that live um i don't know when it is though um overall i think i could have played a bit better but i think i played like solidly enough so i'm i'm happyish um i think game game two um i could have um i i mostly lost because i got uh very unlucky in certain turns um though i think he des deserved to win this this game i think i think on balance game one and three i uh, kind of outplayed him um though it was very close at the end so cheers for the games and i hope this is help people well not necessarily help people but it's also good for me as well to just um get into analyzing these games so i can get better and you know hopefully keep on winning and doing well